This week on the Electric Samba project, module work continues, plus we take a look at other EV projects currently going on. Charger. So after last week's successful tests, this week work on the next 29 modules start. The problem is that it's a very slow process. Currently I'm charging cells at a rate about 20 or so a day and this charging them a single cell at a time. This charging at around 1C rate takes about an hour. So I can only do about five cells a day, which means that every 150 cell module will take weeks and weeks to assemble. So clearly, I need to step up my capacity testing setup. To do so, I recently ordered an IMAX B6 LiPo charger from eBay. This is one of the most economical RC LiPo chargers on the market, selling around $20. The idea is to test it out and if found useful, then order another 10 chargers so I can test 10 cells at a time. One of the downsides of these chargers is that they have a maximum discharge rate of one amp. So a healthy 2000 milliamp hour cell will take around two hours to test. At that rate, I can maybe test three sets of cells per day, which would mean that I could possibly be able to go through 150 cells every five days or so. Now spending the next 29 weeks or seven and a half months cycling through batteries doesn't sound very fun, I know. But maybe that's where the real challenge lies. I mean, think about it this way. Many people think that what I'm doing is silly. Sure, I'm only going to spend a couple thousand dollars in sales, but I have to put seven and a half months worth of work. But what if I were able to figure out a way to cut all that work down to say a couple of weeks. Wouldn't that make it worth it? I mean, I think spending $20,000 for a 40 kilowatt hour pack of cow cells is silly, especially if it could be proven that there is an alternative. Since watching me charge and discharge batteries is as fun as watching paint dry, let's look at what other conversion projects are currently going on. While I was down at EV West last week, Michael showed me around and showed me what they're currently working on. Did, have you finished your initial project? Your, your... <laughs> the car on the rotisserie <laughs> over there? <laughs> Just off camera, we have a 1965 Porsche. I and, see. Uh, we can, we can kind of go through the cars and look in detail later, but uh, we've done some really unique things to that to maintain the really low center of gravity and the central weight, keep the polar moment of the car down. So uh, in that case, we'll probably uh, greatly improve the handling and hope I don't upset any Porsche guys because we really love the cars and we really do minimal modifications to them, especially with the Volkswagen product. Um, we don't do any cutting, you know, we use factory holes and- Yeah, you, know, you guys are actually making kits to right. go into yeah. all these cars and that's what you right. guys are kind of specializing Yeah, we into. just try to, you know, take some of the... Guess, know, guessing work? Yeah, and, right, right, and just make it a little easier. I mean, just, uh, and, and aesthetically pleasing at the same time, you know, right. um, if, if you can't take the car to a show and open up the engine bay and, and be proud of that, then it's not doing really anyone uh, any favors in the EV world, so yeah. to speak. So, uh, you know, so we have the kit and the Volkswagen air-cooled product. It's essentially four bolts and the whole motor and the controller and the water cooler and all of that just goes right in. And, uh, and it's a real time saver. You know, we spend a lot of time, you know, designing the kit. So we hope that it saves people time, you know, for the amount of money that they spend for the kit. Most of the work is really in, in making the boxes, engineering the, yeah. the wiring harnesses yeah. and, and choosing the components and stuff. And it's essentially what you guys are Absolutely. Offering, it's, it's right? uh, you know, 
know, in the business world, they call it NRE, non-recurring expense. Right. And uh, it really is. And now we've got a, a library online of SolidWorks uh, 3D CAD CAM profiles for, you know, especially the Volkswagens, you know, they, they seem to change their gas tank every two years and yeah, <laughs> everything yeah. kind of changed and it's a little willy nilly, if you will. So we have a library of different box sizes and locations and stuff, and we're still measuring. I mean, we're still building our database to this day because, you know, we've got, uh, you know, customers that inquire, oh, hey, I got a notch back. Oh, bring it in. Let's look at it. Let's measure it up. And, and we find that nine times out of 10, the, the stuff that we develop for the Beetle actually drops right in. <laughs> The A1A for something back here behind us and stuff. I think there's a lot of people that are going to be excited about that little car. Cause yeah, it's, a, it's it's an exciting project. You know, even uh, my own dad came down and saw it and uh, started asking me all these questions, and now he wants to build one. So oh, hey! It's, it's, it's <laughs> contagious, you know, it especially if you're a car guy, because you you can be involved in automobiles your whole entire life, mm -hmm. and walk in here, and not only is the 818 new, and not very many people have seen it, but an electric 818. Yeah. Are know. we gonna beat the gas version? I I think so. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so you this know? is so for people who don't know, this is a car. It's a, it's kind of a kid car, yeah, but it's designed right. from the ground up to be a high performance uh, track car, right? Yeah. And it was designed to be used with parts to from uh, the Subaru WRX, WRX. Uh, early 2000s, 2002. Yeah. So it was designed to be use the engine from a donor car and right, put it here. Right. Engine, the brakes, engine. you know, axles. But yeah. pretty much everything else is it's it's engineered from the ground up. To right. Be this, yeah. The actual this suspension car. components, you know, the double wishbone suspension. I mean, really, like race car. Yeah. Suspension, yeah. It's a, it's going to be a great track car. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. And it just came out, uh -huh. right? A few months yeah. ago, yeah. maybe the first one. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. Do you have a number of what you're, the, the model? I don't have the number. The gentleman that we're working with uh, has affiliations with Factory Five oh, Racing. He's done okay. some projects before with them. Uh, he's actually done a, a build on a reality show with them and he's done his own pro projects and sold those. And so he's working on this with us now and we're kind of developing a kit. Ah, in the I process see. so that uh, again the non-recurring expenses yeah. if we get a customer who's like hey i got a factory five we've already got it modeled up in solidworks we can give you the design files for the batteries and the motor mounts and things like that ah okay yeah. so we might i mean they might be rolling out here with an ev818 yeah. it might be the first one on the streets yeah, you that. know we, we uh, i know there's some test units and prototyping right, units that a right. and they've, themselves they've, done, uh, right? Yeah, there's a lot of examples out there. We're excited. This has the dual uh, AC35, and we've seen that before in other cars. Um, much course, bigger cars, much heavier Right, much cars. heavier. Yeah. Um, we put the project on the scales the other day, on the race scales, and it came in at about 1,700 pounds. Oh, wow. And that's pretty much everything in it, but a little bit of interior and some body work. So we think we're going to be below 2,000 pounds oh, wow. can you imagine with that? a twin AC35. So you can tell that's going to be a really fun car to drive. That is going to be an exciting car. So let's go see it. So this is the A18, and it's running a double motor system, right? And it's AC right. motor from right. HPVS. Yeah, so we have the yeah, HPVS uh, dual AC35 in here. And uh, we had to do a little bit of modification to the frame to actually get it to fit because it's a little bit longer than most motors. Oh, I um, see. You can fit, you know, single motors in here without doing any modifications, but, uh, you know, we're real proficient at welding and the frame had not been powder coated at that point. So we went, made the modifications and then sent the frame out for powder coating. We did a little bit of analysis. We did it, you know, put it into SolidWorks and, and kind of looked at the changes that we were going to do and, and oh, uh, awesome. felt real comfortable with them. We knew we weren't compromising the quality of the engineering that went into it already. You guys made like the, the battery boxes. Um... Right, so you know the battery boxes, and and uh, you know we're trying to keep things light, so we're using a lot of carbon fiber carbon and some fiber. of its accent pieces, and some of its uh, you know really has some functionality, like keeping the debris out of the battery boxes and things of that nature. But at this point, we're probably a, a day or two away from firing it up, to actually drive it around, you know, kind of obviously open open chassis go kart style. Um, and then it goes off and uh, our customer is going to do all the body work. And, and it's funny you say that because I just saw that the, uh, the, the main harness for the, for the motor and the HPVS system, yeah. it's still laying there. So you're, yeah. this, is, this is a testament to how easy it is to wire one of these HPVS systems, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. he's a day away, a few hours, you know, that thing, you just put it up, pull <laughs> it up, it's a few cables. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably the systems that are designed to run this other, the rest of the 12-volt system right. of this car is probably 
more complex. <laughs> well, you know, it's it, it's kind of true. You'll spend you know not that much time wiring up a controller, and then maybe installing the cabin heater and routing the ducting and all that might even take longer than hooking up the motor controller. And we continually say this to customers: like this is a lot easier than you think it is. It, it's really yeah. a, a straightforward. Uh, kind of project, no matter what the chassis is, you know, to just kind of get in there and convert the system. I'm hoping to be able to join Michael when they finally get this car on track to test just what level of performance it achieves. So thank you for watching this video. Uh, make sure to catch next week's episode for more electric samba adventures. Until next week, bye. lost our wheel right here folks if you enjoy my videos don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment uh, if you don't then also leave me a comment so i can make these videos better thank you